Hello again and welcome to The Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you're very welcome. Please check the three dots menu at the top or look along the bottom row until you see a little wheel or, or cog icon. Click that and upgrade the quality of the video to 720 or 1080p so that you have a good clear picture to work with. To those of you who may have found this video maybe because of the algorithm, search algorithm, or maybe it's been recommended to you by a friend or a family member, or if you just felt drawn to it by perhaps the spirit of the Lord or just pure luck of the draw, let me explain a little bit about this channel. This is an end times prophecy channel. It is a support channel for the blog that I've been running for the Lord Jesus Christ called the master's voice on the master's voice I upload I transcribe that is I write out the prophetic words that the Lord Jesus Christ has been giving me since the year 2012 the blog is a relatively new project just got it going at the Lord's strong request in May of 2019 so it's going on almost two years after about a year and a half, I would say maybe September or October 2020, the Lord spoke to me and said that I needed to widen the reach of the blog. He said to me, Celestial, you are not using the tools of your generation. You have to do more to disseminate the things that I am telling you. So after a very long time of thinking and prayer, I finally have moved these prophecies onto audio visual space and that's why I'm with you today. I am currently in the America series, which is a series that looks at the nation of the United States and shares with America, her partners, those who live in the continental United States, those who have family here, even though they live outside. These prophecies share with the United States the outlook that, that the Lord Jesus Christ has for her. I've been in this prophecy series for going on five months now. The first series that the Lord moved me to do was the Russia and China series. Please, if you are new to this project, if you are new to this channel, I strongly ask you that to get the best flow for what I'm doing here, watch the prophetic words in order. They're in order. You can actually, uh, you can go to the Russia and China playlist and you can watch them there since that was the first group of prophecies that I listed. They weren't the first ones that I received but they were the first ones that the Lord told me to put online. The reason for that is this. If you do not understand the final end that God has pronounced over this country, then no matter what you hear concerning other prophecies, you'll always be moved to denial. You'll be moved to say it's not true. You'll be moved to look at things that are happening in the public space right now. So you'll refer to media, you'll refer to the news, you'll refer to internet archives. You might even refer to your own public policy and international relations knowledge and say, no, this cannot be based on what I know and based on what is happening in the political space right now, what you're saying is impossible. And I have to tell you, I've shared since the very first video that I've made up to now that this is not a place that the Lord has sent me to debate with anyone. I have a lot going on in my daily life and therefore I can't even moderate the comments on the blog or the website or here on YouTube. And furthermore, God is expanding the platform. There was a very strong request made by a gentleman for Spanish videos. Um, I do not speak Spanish. But God in his mercy did send someone and so I hope to be able to roll out these videos in another language because here in the United States Spanish is of course a huge demographic and I thank God for opening my eyes to the fact that these words needed to go even further afield. But this is not a place where I'm going to debate back and forth with people. This is also not a place where I tend to exhaust myself um, trying to convince anyone of anything. If you don't know what prophecy is, I have a page by that name on my blog, The Master's Voice. Check the description box and you can get all the information for where to find the blog and where to find relevant content to each video that I make. So if you don't know how prophecy works, 
it might actually help for you to visit that. If you don't understand how this particular project works, I invite you to visit the Master's Voice where you can read the welcome page, the about page, and also the basics page so that you can understand that the reason these prophecies are coming forth are not to knock people off of their understanding of what's going to happen in the future, even though God does demand that we pay attention to what he is saying over what we feel, what we think, or even what our pastors might be telling us, or what we might have studied in um, the various churches and religious institutions that we grew up in. God is trying to get not only America's attention, but the world's attention. We're not in the times that we thought we were in before, we are actually in what is known commonly in Christian society as the end times. You may not believe it, it may not look like it, and yet to those who are discerning and those who spend their time in prayer and close to the ear and the mouth of the Lord, you will see that the times have absolutely changed. The times that we are entering into are being marketed to us as something called the new normal. However, nothing is actually new or normal about the times that we find ourselves in. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen out there, whether you're born again or you just happened to come across this video, the changes that you see out there are not coming out of the sky. These changes have been prophesied in the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel 2 Thessalonians 5, and in multiple other places, warning humanity of a time that we come when the landscape of the way we live our lives and the way we interact one with another, and also tellingly one with the government, this state would be very, very different. It would be limiting, it would be controlling, it would be monitoring, and it would be like a tight squeeze on the individual until we come to a place where we don't recognize the world that we grew up in. We don't recognize the way we think and we respond to the world that we now find ourselves living in. And so the prophecy that I have today is in the America series, but it also carries very strong prophetic end times overtones for the nation of America. And I'll go into it right now. The title of today's prophecy given today, April 27th, 2021, is a new government for America. The Iron Kingdom Rises. Inasmuch as these people refused the waters of Shiloh that flow softly and rejoice in Rezin and Ramalia's son, now therefore, behold, the Lord brings up over them the waters of the river, strong and mighty, the king of Assyria and all his glory. He will go up over all his channels and go over all his banks. He will pass through Judah. He will overflow and pass over. He will reach up to the neck and the stretching out of his wings will fill the breath of your land. O Emmanuel. This is the banner scripture for today. Isaiah chapter eight and verses six to eight. So this scripture basically means the waters of Shiloh, Shiloh meaning peace, calm, and also a euphemistic name used for the Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture is basically saying this, the peaceful waters of Shiloh, the peaceful ministry and rulership of the Lord Jesus Christ was not accepted by these people. He offered them his way, but they didn't want it. Therefore, I will let vicious waters overflow them the raging and swelling waters of another king will swell over them and rush across their land like a river that's flooding. He will pass through them. His waters will reach even up to the neck. And he, this other king, will stretch out his wings until they reach from one end of the land to the next. So the Lord prophesied to me of a strong and a great judgment that is coming to the United States and told me not to hold it back. 
And I said here in the prophecy, how I, Celestial, I long for a time when I can enter into prayer and just commune with the Lord for myself, where I can come before the Lord with the issues of my own life, my own needs, and my own desires in his will and not have every single time I come to God be spun into a time of hearing about, praying for, lamenting over the stubbornness of the United States. This is something that greatly, greatly upsets and offends the Heavenly Father. God is not okay with human stubbornness. God is not okay with a lack of repentance. This thing that we are being taught in modern day Christianity, oh God knows your heart, oh God understands, please understand that this is the rooted teaching, a rotten root that is coming from deception, that is coming from the kingdom of hell, and that is coming from centers and individuals rooted in false thinking. And it will cost us greatly in these end times if we internalize things that are not true. If we put our faith in deceitful teachings, things that don't actually have any basis in scripture, and we begin to operate in the paradigms of these things, simply because we keep hearing them coming from our favorite pastors, we keep hearing them coming from our favorite little uh, Christian nugget teachers. If we internalize these things, they will be sweet in the mouth, but they will be extremely bitter when they get down into the soul, into the spirit. And the reason for that is because we are internalizing deceit without knowing it. God does not understand hard-heartedness. He does not accept it. All through scripture, the Lord will constantly bring warning after warning after caution after warning. And the reason that God continues to almost harp on one point is because he greatly wants the hearts of people to hearken to his voice, to turn from whatever path of destruction they were on and come close to him in order to cling to his way. What, what the scripture calls here, the way of Shiloh, what the scripture calls here, the waters of Shiloh that flow softly. Jesus said, Come and take my yoke upon you because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Many people come to Christianity and the new expectations that we are being taught is that you don't have to change anything. Come as you are has become a gospel unto itself. You don't need to make any changes. You don't need to change your lifestyle. You don't need to change your clothing choices. You don't need to change your habits and addictions. God loves you so much and he's so desperate to have you in his kingdom that you can come to God with all your trash, which is true, but then you don't have to divest yourself of the trash, which is false teaching. That is a lie. God is expecting us to become renewed, not only in our minds, but renewed in our temple and renewed in every char characteristic of human life. Anyone who preaches to you that there is no onus upon you to change is lying to you because the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It doesn't mean, oh, be terrified of the Lord. It means you have to have a proper reverence for the Lord. You have to have a proper respect for the Lord. You have to have a proper understanding and apprehension of his words. Not only prophetic words, as so many focus on. People tend to focus on prophecy to the absolute exclusion of the scripture itself. And that is extremely dangerous and extremely unbalanced. Prophecy sits right in the middle of the Bible because it is an indication of how God speaks to and interacts with his people. It is love that moves God to prophesy to us. Prophecy is a message from the future, from a person who's already been there, not me, but the spirit of the Lord. And he sends back these pings. He sends back these signals to let us know in this time, I've gone ahead, I've seen what it will be. I'm writing you these letters because I love you. If you do not change and if you do not apprehend, which means deeply internalize and understand what I, the Lord, am telling you now in your day, 
then when you walk a little ways and you come to the evil day, you will be greatly distressed and unable to cope with what you find here. So the Lord gave me again insights into a coming judgment and he told me not to hold it back. And for the last two weeks, the Lord has kept me in a very brief passage in Isaiah 9. If you've been following the blog for even five minutes, you know that the prophecy in Isaiah 9 verses 10 to 12 comes up all the time. I get it almost every single day. If I ask the Lord to lead me into the passage to study, if I come and say, I'm going to spend time in another place, the Holy Spirit will always speak to me and say, we begin today in Isaiah 9 verses 10 to 12. I have it memorized. And here is a paraphrase. Isaiah 9 verses 10 to 12 talks about a proud and arrogant nation. Now there's a conversation going on in Isaiah 9 where God is speaking. The prophet is speaking like God. And then the prophet is also answering as the nation of Israel. And God says to this, this arrogant nation that a judgment has fallen upon you and fallen upon the people of your land. But this is a proud and arrogant nation. And it says to God, even if the bricks of our habitations fall down, we will build back better. We will cut better stones this time and we will place them in such a way that they don't fall down. We have solutions to our problems. Even if our tall trees were cut down, our best soldiers, our manufacturing, our industry, our military, our trade and industry, anything, even if we went into a slump, God, we'll come back fighting strong with better trees whose crowns reach up to the heavens. And to this, the prophet then speaks as the Lord and he responds, if this is what you say, then here's my answer. I will stir up your enemies against you until they overcome your king. I'll be their biggest cheerleader. I'll strengthen those who hate you and I will spur them on to greatness. One enemy will strike you from the front and another enemy will strike you from the rear and together they will devour you. But even after all that has happened, I'm not done. My hand is stretched out still. So every day the Lord leads me to study this passage and it's been coming with worrying regularity. The Lord has said that this passage is the perfected destiny of the nation of the United States and that she will fall to the exact fulfillment of that scripture. So the vision that I have seen and the message that I must deliver today, there will arise over America, a dark government, a very wicked government that will flow like a raging torrent from one side of the United States to another. A dark cloud is coming over this country and soon it will be revealed. From the left, says the Lord, from the left of America, destruction comes. A dark, dirty wave of your own wickedness will overtake you and you will fall victim to the multiple idols and abominations that you have allowed to take over my land. You will be ruled by cruel rulers and then you will know this is how I repay you for your sin. My repayment is to give you what you wanted. And so I just briefly saw the nation of the United States. I've mentioned this before. And I saw a wave of very filthy gray and strongly flowing water flowing from the left side of the nation across the whole nation. I've shared before in another prophecy that I saw this wave and the water was extremely filthy and extremely rank, meaning that it smelt like the kind of water you might expect to, to see flowing at a pig farm. And this water would not sink into the ground and dry up. Even if the sun was shining on it, the water covered the nation of the United States and then it sat uh, and it stank to the skies. So the Lord says, speak now and tell them what I say. A mighty government, unlike any that has ever been before it, wicked, divisive, and cruel, shall rule you. A government that plans deadly schemes against its own people. A government that puts people 
to death. A government that speaks in dark sayings and uses multiple realities until you, the citizens, become confused and exhausted and don't know which reality to believe. This is an evil leadership coming and no one will escape its claws. Both the righteous and the unrighteous will be affected as a new world and a new world order rises to power in America. This is the word of the Lord. The righteous and the unrighteous shall see it. Therefore, call upon the Lord and be saved. Now, I see many people come to this channel and say, I don't believe this because God is a loving God. God loves his children. God will not allow us to go through this. And all I say to people is that I can always tell when somebody has actually spent time not cherry picking verses out of the Bible to make themselves feel better, but has actually spent time immersing themselves in God's word and coming to understand more than just his acts, but coming to understand his ways. I've shared multiple times on this channel that when the Lord announces judgment over a nation, that judgment acts as a blanket that is thrown over a bed. Every single person knows how a bed is made. You never throw the blanket on half of the bed and then leave the other half unmade because that's not how you make a bed. You throw the blanket over everything and then all of the bed is under the blanket. The difference with the blanket of judgment and curses is that the righteous will see it, but because of seeking God and because of his mercy, which is an even greater blanket than the blanket of judgment, the righteous are allowed to survive in whatever means the Lord decides. So it's not up to the righteous to say, God, for instance, if the Lord sends a prophecy and he has sent multiple prophecies on this space, that civil war will come to the United States. How does it benefit you as a viewer to sit in your home, to not prepare, to not get any kind of provisions, to not even do the very entry level basic thing of going to God and say, God, I've heard this word and I have come to try this word in the place of prayer. I've come to make my prayer like a hot oven and then take this prophetic word and place it into that oven to let it bake before you like a cake to see if it will crumble and fall apart as a falsehood or to see if it will actually coalesce into a solid entity. And I hear your voice, the familiar voice that has led me all my life Tell me, this is my word, and what you have heard is so. If you hear a prophecy that civil war is coming to the United States, and you do nothing, you respond in, uh, I don't believe this, and you cast it off, nothing happens for a while, because the ingredients for civil war, to anyone who understands how war arises in a nation, don't happen overnight. So you may ignore it. And that means that you will not be watching for dissidents in the country. You will not be watching for anger between brother and brother, which is how civil wars are born. You will not be watching for the breakdown of government. You will not be watching for the breakdown of the trust of the people in government and how the people slowly start to mistrust their leaders because they can no longer put their confidence in what the leaders are telling them based on how the leaders are behaving and what they're doing. You will miss all that because you're clinging to your paradigm, God is good, and because I'm good, nothing bad can happen to me. And that is, that is almost juvenile in the progression of logic because... The Bible says in Isaiah chapter one that even the donkey knows and the ox knows where his owner lives. So even if they stray during the day, when nightfall is coming, even the animals that don't have the reasoning capacity that we have know how to wind their way back home. But he says, yep, my people don't know me. I continue with what the Lord said. If righteous and unrighteous will be affected by the new world order, the only difference will be how the righteous and the unrighteous experience the new world order. And I can say this confidently because 
The rise of a one world government is prophesied throughout the Bible. It came from the time King Nebuchadnezzar had his dream in Daniel chapter 5, and it continues all the way to the book of, the Re of Revelation, where it is explained in more detail by the Apostle John. So any person who thinks, oh, God is so good, the new world order is a myth, I don't even know what to tell you because it has existed before I was born. And the Lord says, it is surely coming. Your freedoms and your liberties are at an end. Your privacy will be stripped away as the state grows very strong in power and everything will be sacrificed to peace and safety. You will hear this. For the safety of all, you can no longer do this anymore. For the safety of all, you can no longer own this anymore. God says that America should be prepared to be naked because all her rights will be removed and she will be exposed. The Lord says that hidden riches will be uncovered, meaning that money that you thought you had tucked away in Boca Raton or money that you thought you had hidden in Switzerland, or maybe you were keeping one or two title deeds, or you were keeping some seeds, you know, as legacy seeds to give to your kids when you pass on and they inherit the farm. God said that the state will shine a light into every corner and demand to know what each man owns. A crown of hardness is coming into office and with it, every abomination shall overflow within the borders of America. You will have a queen and a king and your days of freedom will end. On the master's voice, there are at least four or five prophecies where the Lord says that the current leader of this nation will be unceremoniously removed. I've put a link to one of the videos in the description box to help you. It's also in the post itself. Please always be in the habit of going back to the blog to read the written post. When you read carefully and without panic, a lot of your questions are answered and then you are able to absorb what the Lord is saying, not through your personal filter, but through the filter of the Spirit of the Lord, which should be in you, helping you discern truth from lies. The Lord says next that a census will be taken in the United States. Not an ordinary census where you count people, but a census where every valuable asset in the nation will be counted. Everything that a man possesses will end up accounted for as people are forced to declare everything they own to the government, whether they like it or not. These things will happen here, says God. And with time, you will not own anything anymore. Private ownership will be removed and you will live in a state-based system. You will be poor and not free. You will work for an allowance that will be given to you as credits and no longer will your own sweat earn you wealth and liberty. You will become a slave in your own economy and that will be the law. State power. And so the next thing I saw was the American bald eagle. You know how the eagle has these hunched up shoulders looking one way proudly. I saw the American bald eagle and the flag behind it, but then I saw a shadow rise and the shadow was of two great metal wings. And that shadow rose not over the, the eagle only, but over the entire United States. And when that shadow rose up, the Lord said that hardship will enter the very bones of Americans because their basic needs will fail and they will start hoarding things. And God said that when hoarding starts, when the economy reaches that point where you have to be stocking up for six months of this and six months of that because there's so much uncertainty in the market, there's so much uncertainty in daily life, there's so much price fluctuation, there's so much shortages of everything. God says that the rich will be much better off from the poor and it's not a spiritual matter because when you have more, you can buy more and when you have less, you can buy less. He said that inequality will bloom like a fresh punch blooms, like a black eye on the face of America and hunger will clamp down on people's bellies. 
the Lord says that racial inequality will burst forth in powerful shooting streams in America. So race riots, um, racial pushback, um, racial rhetoric will greatly rise in America. And remember, as I said earlier, these are the little seeds that blossom eventually into civil war. He said, your people will go to war. Brother will be against brother in every situation. People will hate each other and vitriol. Vitriol is strong and angry speech. He says it will spill out like acid over the innocent in America and the guilty alike. Basic goods will cost a fortune. You will see this. The very food that you need for your children will cost a fortune. You will feel this. And when you cry for food, you will remember that I said, I, the Lord, will remember the nation that remembers me, and I will do good to it, and I will strengthen that nation and exalt it. But when a nation curses me, when even the young ones in a nation know how to do evil from a very early age, when there is an overflow of mockers and scoffers in that nation, then I know that I am not welcome, and my grace will depart from that place. And then I, the Lord, will relent of the good things that I intended to do for that nation, and I will uproot it instead. I will make it a desolation, and it will become a hissing on the face of the earth. And the verse for that is Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 5 to 10. And I appreciate the Lord because nearly everything he tells me is a scripture. All I need to do is return to my Bible and I always find his entire paragraphs replicated in his word. The Lord says that Babylon, which is the United States, will become such a shame and a proverb that people passing by, meaning the other nations, will stand far away and they will say, is this the nation that once ruled all the nations of the earth? Oh, how you have fallen, mighty Babylon, and see how great is your shame. The Lord says that daily life in America will become very squeezed. When you're squeezed, it means that you don't have options. It means that your back is against the wall and you're hard pressed. It means that almost every choice before you is a bad one and a difficult one. He says that life will become very limited, very small that we will be policed here in America. We will be watched and highly monitored, that everything will be made open and that privacy will become a thing of the past. The Lord says that America will become a highly automated and mechanized society. So to you out there who gets upset when you call the bank and it takes you 20 minutes of trying to outsmart that electronic voice on the phone, it's going to get a lot worse than not being able to reach a human being when you need a human being to solve something for you. You will inhabit a mechanical society that has no human contact and no human comfort. In the future, machines will do everything for you and will cut off the bonds of your human brotherhood. You will stray far from one another as the iron kingdom arises in your midst. You will lose your love, your kindness, and human compassion for one another as iron enters the blood of America. Your ways have found you out. Your sin has found you out. The iron kingdom rises now and with it comes the final end to all things. This is the word of the Lord. Now, I think there are about five prophecies on my blog considering um, concerning the Iron Kingdom, as the Lord calls it. And if you didn't know, the Iron Kingdom refers to the final two kingdoms that were on the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar dreamt about. The legs were of iron and the feet were of iron and clay. There are many prophetic words where the Lord has opened up that teaching to us. I will link them on the blog. So click the link to this prophecy in the description below, and then you can go to the blog and read them there. And so I just put a caveat and a caution here. 
Like I've said many times, I have no idea where these videos go. I have no idea who's going to see them or what they're going to think. And I think that's well, because if I am minded to be concerned about how the audience to these videos will receive them, it is not likely that I will be able to courageously and honestly execute the task that the Lord has given me. I'm not here because I don't have anything to do. And as one person nicely said on the blog, either you're telling the truth or you spend a lot of time reading the newspapers because it's not possible for one person to cover this many topics. And indeed it isn't because some of the topics on the master's voice do not appear in the newspapers and they won't be there for quite some years. The purpose of this blog is to alert people to the times that humanity are, is going into. We are going into a time where everything that we have known since birth is going to flip on its head so sharply that the Lord Jesus remarked of those times that people's hearts will fail them because of the things that they see coming on the earth. When you hear a loving and compassionate person like the Lord Jesus Christ basically telling you that in the end of times, what you're going to see and experience is basically going to topple you, catapult you straight into a stroke or a heart attack, then you as a wise person might be minded to listen. The Lord has said on this blog that homelessness will come to America, her economy will fail, she will be internationally ridiculed and shamed. She will be invaded by Russia and China and their allies, Ukraine, Taiwan, one other Asian nation that he has never revealed to me and recently told me that even more countries will join the attack against America that even I don't know about. He has not told me what nations those are. He said that America will be involved in a fall from grace. She will experience international scandals. Her National systems, government, schools, medicine will fail. Resources will be scarce. Hunger, famine, pestilence, sickness, natural disasters, dissidents, and insurgency, which mean, means that pol politics is going to start to roll like an angry washing machine. Civil war, international war, and don't forget, supernatural things will happen here and more. So I put a picture of the bird that I saw, the metal wings that I saw, and I'm just going to try and hold it up here for the camera. And there's the bird that I saw arising over the United States. And that bird, ladies and gentlemen, is 100% affiliated with Hitler's Germany, Nazi Germany as it was in that nation during that time, so will it become here. And so I have delivered the prophecy as the Lord God has given me. He said that the video should be made today and go up today. And so that is what I'm doing here. I thank each and every one of you that use this resource rightly. May God bless you. You're not listening and believing these things for me. You're believing them for yourself and your families and your own future. Thank you if you share the videos. Thank you if you just watch the videos and take these things to heart and pray about them as an intercessor or just as someone who wants to stand in the gap for the souls of others. All information for the blog is below. And until I see you again, I'm Celestial with the Master's Voice. Take care.